highly personal. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it has to do with things that, uh, if they, I'll tell you what, if aliens can do, know this and do this, we're in, we're in deep dog. I mean, they're way out of our league. I, I mean, a couple of them, a couple of them were, I got told of people's passing standing right there. I could hear it. Nobody else could. I mean, it's, it's, I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there and it's, this happened a long time ago and it's, it's still hard to handle. So you got to kind of forgive me on that. But yeah. now when I was doing it with the ship, eh, I kind of thought, but I don't know. But I really wasn't ever scared or worried. But you know, it, it, it concerns yeah. me with you, honestly, is that, uh, how can I say this? Didn't you, after you had your implant removed and tell me if I'm wrong, because I've interviewed so many people the last couple of years, didn't you and your wife go in, in back into town, run across another UFO? This is after you had your implant removed. Okay. Hey, you dropped out. Huh? I said you dropped out. I hear you. Yeah, you dropped off, and I can hear you now. Okay. But did you hear where I asked when, after you had your implant? Uh-uh. Okay, after you had your implant removed, uh, after a period of time, didn't you and your wife were going back into town, and didn't you see another UFO again off of a hill or something? Uh, I've seen two more up close. I've seen one in the same spot, and then we were coming home one night, my wife and my three daughters, and we ran into a strobe light object. You know, we stopped our car and got out and looked at it for a while until it kind of just meandered off. Now, I knew what I was working at, but my wife and my, and my wife kind of, but my daughters probably really didn't comprehend the whole thing. But, yep. I just wonder so, if you were abducted again and had another implant put in, because the reason why I say this, a lot of the people I, I have had on my show that either had the implant removed one guy actually had his implant he removed it himself uh he yeah, I, I, I don't know how somebody could have the courage to do that but he removed, he removed that i think maybe you were on uh that night too james uh that he removed the implant and uh he, he ended up with another implant uh afterwards and then just wondering too if they picked you as a subject to implant, you know, I got a funny feeling well, if you had another test, you might have another implant in you. Well, I could have. I, I've, I've been abducted again. I mean, it's uh, it was it was a strange night. Uh, they kind of had a little bit of an ending, just like Travis Walton had with his experience, which kind of. Because, like I said, it was almost like an oddball dream for a little bit. But uh, I get a mask put on my face and put my finger up by my mouth. I black out, and then I wake up in my bed, kind of like he was on the table. He said, and then he said he stuck his finger up there. And next thing he was on the road, and he and I said, okay. But uh, now, are they putting an implant in me? I don't know, or whatever. It's six one half. I don't know how to look for it. You know, maybe they put in an, a good enough implant now that I can't find it, you know. Uh, so whatever they want to do, I mean, it's, that's uh, that's that. Now, but, yeah, uh, they, in fact, they abducted me and they gave me West Nile. And I really had talking to another patient, a Dr. Lear, who had surgeries almost identical to mine, that's wrong the well. And when I told him a little while back, we talk once in a while, and, they lit him up. It's, he thought they'd give him West Nile, too, so. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's real interesting. And it's contacted with the last you know, Dr. Lear and uh, turns into a uh, orb-type craft. It's, you know, that mine was a flashing orb, but this is a, he ran, it seems they ran into a yellow or orange-type solid uh, orb-type craft. It was, mm, Rather large, but uh, you know, when I broke my neck, I imploded my third cervical vertebrae and find out well, where's his implant? Well, it's a, around his third cervical vertebrae. So, you know, just little curiosities that keep showing up that a lot of it. Wonder why? 
Interesting. Have you tried contacting like other people that Dr. Roger Lear removed implants from? And and it, it took. Well, them- I, I know three or four of them. There's several of them. You know, they just you know they've had some pretty rough, and I they got and I don't want to know how to contact them. You know, and uh, you know I can't. Um, everybody. Here. Yeah. Quite a few. Uh, yeah, it, it, James. Several it, ladies. He's uh, one of them was a gal got abducted and uh, she remember, and but when they put they brought her back, they couldn't get her back in her car. The doors were locked, so she was standing outside her car, and it was about twenty degrees out. So, but yeah, I I know you know three uh, three doctor uh, patients right now. I, I talk with three of the guys. Yeah. Steve Coburn's one of them, Ron Noel, and uh, Eric Mitchell is this young man's name, and he talks a little bit. He's talking a little bit. Mufon's been uh, helping him out. You know, I didn't know about it, didn't know how involved he was, but, you know, talking with him a little bit is it's quite interesting. Has any of the people that have had the implants removed, have any of them been emotionally scarred that you've talked to? No. I think we we're lost. Him. We're losing you. Hey, James. I think we lost him. Yeah, I know. Every time he gets this something, it's like it, right at the perfect timing. Yeah, we we, we did lose him. I, yeah. it, isn't it kind of interesting, James? Anytime we do a show where we're talking about implants, it, it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it they just the show. I, I mean. The phone it just like cuts out, and this is not the first time this has happened, and it's happened almost any time I've talked to Timothy, uh, regardless of what type of phone system I use to talk to him, uh, and and again with some of the other people when we talk about you know their implants and stuff, all of a sudden as soon as we start talking about them, guess what? I know it it, it goes out. You know I'm wondering these implants. I'm sure he's got another one. Maybe they put a backup one just in case, too. And here's the thing. If they're that far advanced, who's to know, who's to say that they can't interfere with things because they're probably listening in, and maybe they don't want us to hear. It just seems funny that every time he gets to that one point, it's, it breaks up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try calling him again, and let's see what happened. Uh, what number do I want to try? Da, 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 da. Let's see. Uh, give me a second here. Okay. Uh, okay, we're gonna try. We're gonna try this number back again. Okay, there he is. Yeah, you, hey, Timothy, you just totally disappeared there, like you were non-existent. Hey, my my phone filled up some fifteen-digit number, and I got some kind of weird call from Verizon or whatever. I mean, right? Interesting. So, yeah, it happens every time I. Like yeah. I was just telling James every time I talked about somebody who's, you know, been implanted, the, the phone call, you know, I can talk every night, we can talk about whatever, never have a problem. As soon as I talk about implants, it seems like the conversation's having constant, you know, problems dropping out or with static. It's strange. Well, I went to do an interview in Cal- out in California shortly after my surgery for Dr. Lear. I can't remember the name of the program, but we couldn't, even, I mean, the cameras, everything kept going goofball all the time and finally we finally just had to quit that is so interesting so you, yeah i mean uh, so you never got so. checked again to see if you had another implant how did you, you, your wife was with you those times how did what what was her was she scared when she saw the ufos i mean were you scared well i really you know well i really you know i was Awestruck, I, I think, you know, I think we were a little, ha- she was a little apprehensive, but no, I well, it wasn't so told us. Scared, you know, I mean, but like I said, when you had things happen to you that way out of the normal, I mean, I, to me, it was just okay. Now that I know we're not, now I know there's another intelligent life in the universe, you know, that may be non-mortal. Yeah. So now, when yeah, it was an interesting, yeah, but no, I wasn't ever really scared. I'm, 
Well, you're braver than me because I'll be honest with you. Back what I saw in the 70s with my then wife, uh, and I use the word then, uh, the, when the car up on the in the desert, it lit up like daylight, brighter than daylight. I thought it was a police helicopter because I was going fast with my GTO and I pull off the road and my wife was freaking out. I get out of the car and I don't hear the sound of a helicopter. I don't hear any sounds at all. The light was so bright, it hurt my eyes. I try to look at where it was coming from, and poof, it was gone. And sometimes I really wish, you know, that if I was abducted or she was abducted, they could have just kept her. But, I mean, it scared me. You know, it it wasn't like it scared me right then and there. It was like a few minutes later, I, I my brain digested. Well, what was that? Well, yeah, I under, yeah. Well, I had a little bit of a premonition on my well, on all the encounters, but like I said, when it, but it comes to the missing time, then I'm absolutely sitting here with drawing a blank, you know, because that's, <laughs> there ain't no other way to put it. It's missing time, so. Now, since you. But I, you know, I really wasn't ever worried, no. But you were abducted, uh, you know, and you had an implant put in with you without your wishes, without you asking for it. Have you ever, since you had and discovered you had your implant, have you ever gone to bed at night and just kind of like laid there and not being able to sleep and wonder like, hey, am I going to be abducted out of my bed? Well, I think it's happened a couple of times, but I don't really worry about it. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, they're not letting me remember. You know, and but I'm sure, you know, if I was like other some of the other abductees and had bad memories and whatever, you know, it'd be a different story. But they, I'm, they don't let me remember nothing. So, and they're doing a good job of it. So I don't know if it's good or bad, but that's, you know, that's just the way it is. And, you know, if I really worried about it like that, then it'd be a little tough. I lay in bed more so with, with, a, with a just a little disgust on the, you know, the way a government society, especially the government, is treated, approaches this uh, dilemma that I, you know, come out and ask them about. Uh, you know, they had a they had a memo in 2009 on, in, the, in the White House on Dr. Lear's work and research. And uh, what nowadays we got, uh, we have vaping, so we have 17 people have died of vaping, and it's a, quite a crisis, but... Dr. Lear did 17 surgeries, but there wasn't nothing about people being uh, abducted and, and implanted by aliens to, to, to hit the panning mode with, so to speak. You know, it's just little stuff like that. Well, I think the government, you know, it still isn't ready to come out and tell us what is going on. But could you imagine if the government would have came out when Dr. Roger Lear was, you know, going on radio, like on Art Bell's show and on TV, you know, all those, you know, cable channels and all those shows and, and talking about implant removal and implants, you know, people being abducted, the government would deny it. You know, because they they they, they, oh, yeah. they they still deny it. But I, I, I've interviewed so many people that, you know, claim that they have been abducted. Some people, it took years before they started remembering. Some people, they, evidently, whatever they do to make you forget, they didn't forget. And, it, you know, and if you had a bad experience and you remember being abducted and them doing experiments with you, uh, That's correct. It, 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 could you imagine if you went through all, you could remember the pain you went through while they had you on whatever they have you on and experimenting on you and then putting in an implant without, you know, uh, numbing you up where you were going through yeah. all this pain. Could you imagine every night you go to bed it, since they didn't erase it out of your mind completely, this, the fear, because I have heard it from a couple of people that they have a fear. Every time they go to bed at night, they're scared oh. about being abducted again and having to go through all that same cycle again. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, you know. That's why, you know, I still kind of wonder about myself. I don't, you know, I don't I don't have that problem. You're but, you know, to say it's not, to today it's not real. I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've run into some people, you know, yeah, they're logically, uh, you know, have some, have some, problems you know there's a fear and i don't blame them a bit yeah i but, w- uh, okay we need to go on break i'm going to mute you so don't hang up we're going to be back 
In two and a half minutes, okay. you're listening to Timothy Collin, my guest. This is Gary on Night Dreams yep. Talk Radio, and we are transmitting all over the world.